Welcome back to HubDoc tutorial number four. In my last video in part three, I made the mistake at the end of the video saying that the next series was gonna be part five. So just to make sure there isn't any confusion, there are not five parts to this series, there are actually only four. And this is the um, last and final uh, part of the HubDoc tutorial series that I've, I'm posting. So what we're gonna talk about in this series is integrations, and there are many different integrations that you can hook up to your HubDoc so that you can kind of streamline your workflow a little bit. There's just a couple of them listed up here um, on this HubDoc dashboard, and you'll see we, we can sync to Xero, uh, QuickBooks Online, Bill.com, ShareFile, Google Docs, uh, or Google Drive, I should say, excuse me, and so many others. But the ones that we're gonna talk about today because they're the ones that we use most frequently are QuickBooks Online and Google Drive. So the whole kind of purpose, at least for us, of implementing HubDoc into our workflow was that there would be an easy way for our clients to get their paper documents to us because we're a virtual bookkeeping firm. So we aren't running around town picking up paper copies of things. We're not getting big bulky packages in the mail or anything like that. Um, all documentation and receipts and invoices and things like that are being submitted electronically into a document portal. And we use HubDoc as that document portal. And, um, <clears throat> but we also want it to be, we don't want it to be a place where, okay, the document is in the document portal and now we put in all of the information that pertains to the filing system and how we want this document filed and then we have to duplicate that data entry by going into our um, accounting software and then entering all of the data there and then if we want to have a copy of the receipt or invoice attached in QuickBooks we would need to download the invoice and then upload it into QuickBooks in order to attach it. That's the way we used to do it when we used to have people submitting stuff to us via email or submitting stuff to us via a Google Drive folder or something like that. We'd have to download the documents and then upload them into QuickBooks. We'd have to give them a file name that was searchable and then we'd have to put that same information into the accounting software and it was just way more work than was necessary. So HubDoc takes away all of that extra work for us and I'm gonna show you how it does that today. So we talked about in our earlier videos what these tabs mean. That was in um, tutorial number two, how to use the tabs. And so we're gonna go to the review tab because that's gonna be where you do the bulk of your um, data entry and processing from. And I have three invoices in here today that need to get taken care of. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to click on this edit document bar over here on the right if this um, window or data entry screen isn't already open for me. And we talked about it in video number three, tutorial number three, how the details up in this section are usually extracted by HubDoc so that there's no data entry necessary by you. It's really more of just a review to make sure that it pulled the correct information and maybe you need to tweak a little something here or there. Maybe you need to add a due date, but for the most part, this information is already going to be populated for you. So that's one less thing you have to do. And this is going to be determining how this gets filed and how it's searchable later on. So just know that when you're reviewing this information that you understand how it's going to be um, searched for whatever you think you're going to search for it by, make sure that that information is reflected here. Um, this is a receipt because it's already been paid. It's automatically taken out of the account. So I'm just going to click on receipt and then I'm going to come down here. So there's two places that I have this uh, document that I want it to integrate to. One of them is Google Drive because I want just an extra backup copy. So this is not necessary. This is not something you have to do because First of all, you have an electronic copy archived and stored in the filing cabinet, as I like to call it, in HubDoc over here by vendor name. They're um, sorted over here, and that's all talked about in video number three. But getting back to what we're doing over here, so you've got it stored there. Once I integrate this with my QuickBooks, I'm also going to have a copy of this image attached to the transaction in QuickBooks. So that's two copies of this invoice. And I'm just being 
triple redundant here in making sure that I have adequate backups because anytime you're dealing with electronic files or anything like that, there's always the opportunity to lose things. So I'm also going to have it published to a Google Drive folder. And that way, if I ever stop using HubDoc, I still have it in my QuickBooks Online and I also still have it in my Google Drive folder. Um, and if I don't have a subscription to HubDoc anymore, it's not that big of a deal because I still have two copies of my documents. So um, the first thing that I'm going to tell you is I always like to publish it to Google Drive first. And in this case, this one is actually set up to automatically publish to Google Drive, so I don't have to do anything with it. But you'll see when we get to these others that there might be, you know, it'll look a little bit different. So this is telling me that this has already gone to Google Drive and it's going to be stored in Google Drive exactly the same way that my folder structure is set up over here because that's how I chose to do it in my settings in HubDoc. And I'm not going to get into all of that today. That's something that, you know, is for maybe another video or something that you can just go play around with in the settings, but I chose to have it file things exactly the same way that they're filed in HubDoc just for simplicity and consistency. So this one is already sent over there, but then we need to tell it, okay, how does this need to get sent over to QuickBooks Online? Now, the really nice thing is you can, if you go into settings and then from there go into your suppliers, so we'll go to Google as an example, you can actually set up kind of rules for each one of your suppliers so that this automatically kind of fills in for you each time and you don't have to do the data entry every time. But let's just say um, here, we, is this the QuickBooks integration? It's okay, integration, so configure rules for QuickBooks Online. So you can configure rules here so that it does the same thing every time and you don't have to tell it what to do each time. So in this case, Every time I want it to publish as an expense, because this is not an invoice I need to pay, this is not going to accounts payable, this has already been paid, so I just want it to publish as an expense. I want it to go to an account called Cost of Virtual Operations. I want the supplier to be, you know, Google LLC, and this is, this is all coming directly from my vendor list in QuickBooks. They're syncing and talking back and forth to one another, so this is directly from my vendor list in QuickBooks. Um, the payment type is always going to be credit card. It's going to be this particular credit card. I don't have it going to a class. And then um, whatever I want the description to be each time, I can customize that. If it needs to get assigned to a customer, I can choose the customer and then I can choose if it's billable. It, those two don't apply to me right now. So if that is how I want it all set up, then all I would do is I would save my changes. And then every time that, and then here's where it's, um, checked to auto sync to Google Drive, but if I didn't want it to automatically sync to Google Drive, I could just uncheck that box so that these would not automatically sync. So now I can just save my changes, and every time that this Google invoice comes into HubDoc, it's gonna it's gonna use that rule. So it's doing it just the way that it was set up in the rules. It made it an expense. It's going to Google the credit card. That's the particular credit card. That's the account it's going to. Um, the description is filling in. It's all right there. All I really need to do is just review, make sure I agree that's how I want it and that there's no exceptions this time. And then I'll just click on publish and this is gonna send it right over to my accounting software. It's going to remove it from my review tab. It's going to file it over here in my Google folder. So if I go to Google Inc, I should see that one that I just processed over here in the all tab and here it is so it's filed away for me and um go back to review and get back to where we were <clears throat> okay and it takes me on to the next one and i can just move on to the next one now if i go into my quickbooks online over here and i just pulled on my recent transactions by clicking in my search box up here I will see that expense sitting in here. It's hard to tell that's what it is, so I'll just click on it to open it. But we will see that that expense has now come over to QuickBooks. It happens immediately. Um, it's in here, and down at the bottom, it has the document itself attached to the transaction in QuickBooks. So it makes it great for easy reference um, so that our clients, if they ever wanna look at something and they wanna see the details, they can just open up that document and they can see it and um, that works out really well. And then all of the information that we put into HubDoc is transferred over into here. And so now this transaction is in. 
And then even more sweet than that is if you have are using the bank feeds in QuickBooks Online, then it's going to automatically match up the bank feed transaction to that transaction that you sent over from HubDoc. So for instance, if I go in here and I go to my credit card, if that transaction has already processed and come through, oh wait, here it is right here. Perfect. So it did come in. So Google pulled the amount from my credit card and we processed that through HubDoc and it came over and it found that record and it attached it. And if I actually click on this in my bank feed, I can see right here that this is the record that it found. I can click on the link to open it and just verify that it's the right transaction. But I happen to know that, you know, it is because I've done this long enough. But, um, and then all I have to do is click match. So I've matched it to my bank and I've got a copy of the receipt attached to it. Like I really didn't have to do anything except look at the invoice, make sure that the data was correct in HubDoc and then hit process. And that's all I had to do to get all of that, all of that information done in literally seconds. Whereas it used to take me several minutes to make that happen when I had to do everything manually. So We'll just run through one more here just so you can get a feel for this one more time. So here we have a flowers invoice and we're just gonna, again, this was probably charged to the credit card. Let's see if it even tells us here. It tells us, yep, that it was using a credit card ending three zero. So I'm gonna do this as a receipt and from you flowers, it's pulling the invoice number, it's pulling the date, it's putting in the amount and that is correct. And then down here, I don't actually have, um, well, actually I must have rules already set up for QuickBooks, but the first thing I'm going to look at is Google Drive. Okay, so this one here is not set to automatically sync to Google Drive, so all I have to do here is hit configure and then just publish. If I wanted to auto sync in the future, I could just click this little button here so that it'll auto sync to Google Drive. So then I'll just click on publish there. And then I need to fill in my details here for QuickBooks Online. So I'm just gonna review these. Yes, it's an expense from you flowers credit card. That's all correct. I would put this to advertising and I'm gonna change my description here. And, um, and then I would just publish this and that's all I have to do. So it's that quick and, and that easy. And then it disappears from my list and then I go on to my next one. And I can see here that this is also paid already. I know that and to make it a receipt, this is the vendor name that is correct. It's pulling the invoice number, the date, the amount is correct. This is all correct. This is where I want it to go. I literally just need to publish it to Google Drive, publish it to QuickBooks and off it goes. Now. What I will say is if you're publishing to Google Drive and you're publishing to QuickBooks, I always publish to Google Drive first because if you publish to QuickBooks first and you don't have the Google Drive, um, like you didn't open it up, it'll disappear and then you'll have to go hunt it down and then send it over to Google Drive. It'll disappear out of your review tab here if you don't do, I always like to just open them both up so that you can fill in the details for both and then do Google Drive and then QuickBooks Online. That's just a quick little tip. Um, it's not a necessary thing. Yeah. The other thing that I didn't really mention in any of my other videos is that you can process things while they're in the processing tab. So um, what might happen is if you start processing it and then all of a sudden it might move to the review tab or something. Well, if you step away for a second and then come back, it may not be in your processing tab anymore. It might move to the review tab, but if you don't want to wait for it to go through the processing, you can definitely enter things from that tab. That's not a problem at all. So Hopefully you found this video series helpful and that you've uh, learned a few things. If you enjoyed this video, please click subscribe and uh, check out some of our other videos. Thanks for watching.